Good morning. Well, welcome everyone to College Hill. It's time for us to begin our worship service time together. We're glad you're here. Whether you're in person or whether you're worshiping online, we look forward to our time together this morning. Just a few things to make you aware of before we begin our, our worship together. Uh, a couple of good news announcements. Gary had his results from his MRI this past week, and it, they were determined that he does not need surgery, that uh, they're going to monitor that situation over the next three months, but uh, certainly glad for Gary and Linda that uh, that's not going to be necessary. Also, Scott got good news of his five-year checkup. He is cancer-free, and we rejoice for that, so we're certainly happy for him. As you're aware, we have several members that are dealing with COVID issues right now, and that continues to be the case, so we need to be thinking about them and remembering them in our prayers during this coming week. A couple of scriptures I want us to read this morning as we begin. First of all, Romans 13, 1 through 2. It says, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Then in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, and intercession and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. You know, we put new people in office during this past week, and there is a, a wide range of opinions about whether people are happy, unhappy, or indifferent toward that. But regardless of what our feelings are, this makes it plain that God institutes the authorities in our lives. And as we read through the Bible and we're given instructions about the way that we're supposed to live and what we're supposed to do, it's never dependent on what somebody else does. The Bible never tells us, you do this, but if somebody else isn't doing what they're supposed to, then all bets are off. We're just told this is the way we need to live, and we're given instructions about that. And so when we're told to respect the authorities, we're told to pray for those in authority, we need to do that regardless of who they are. And we need to remember that no matter who is in control in government, God is ultimately in control. And as long as he is, everything is fine. So we're going to begin our worship and prayer this morning. And while we pray, we are going to remember those that are in authority and the people that um, are responsible for our government. And we're not going to just do that this morning. We need to continue to do that throughout the year and remember that God is truly in control. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for today, even though it's... Uh, a dreary day outside. It's bright and wonderful in here because we're going to spend this time worshiping you and ask that you be with us while we do that. But we ask that you bless the people in our congregation that are struggling right now, that have um, COVID that they're dealing with, that um, you know some are in serious situations, some's not so much. But we just ask that you be with all of them and be working powerfully in their lives and make them well. Thank you that Scott and Gary got good week, good news this week, and we praise you for answering our prayers in that regard. Lord, help us to respect the people that have been placed in government. Help us to realize that um, they are there because of the will of the people and that uh, whether that was our will or not, that they are going to be in those positions and that we need to be praying for them and respect them, do what we can to um, make their time in office successful and realize that no matter who they are, that you are in control, not only in our country, but throughout the world. And things will be okay as long as we rely on that and realize that our faith and trust need to be put in you. Be with us in our worship time this morning. Help us to recognize each and every day what an incredible Lord and Savior we have. And we pray all these things in his name. Amen. Care not today what the morn may bring in shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know will live for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith, Jesus above, trusting confide. Oh. 
Jesus of love, trusting can Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity to come and to worship you face to face, that we can come and to pray to you and ask for your forgiveness and your help in our lives. We know others have forsaken these privileges that you have given to us and had, do not turn to you for help, uh, do not turn to you for salvation. And Father, we just are so grateful that we've been raised right and know the right thing to do and have followed uh, the commandments of God and, and come to you and ask you for these things that we need at all times. Father, we know today in our society that many people are using the many avenues that they have to say very negative things about each other, uh, about our government, about our institutions, about uh, individuals. We ask, Father, that you help us train our thoughts and our heart to think well of people, to think about what is good in life, what is good about our country, what is good about our, our world, 
and we know that sin comes from the heart and also goodness comes from the heart uh, good works come from the heart as we think good things and think about how to help people not be a burden to them but be an encouragement to them and to help them see the that Jesus is the light of their life and that they need to come to him Father, we have uh, a number who are sick, Alvin Jennings and others who are still suffering. We ask that you be with them and allow them to recover their full health. We ask, Father, that you uh, be with us as we continue to uh, try to conquer this uh, COVID disease. May we quickly conquer it this year and get it behind us and that all can be healthy again and uh, have a chance to return to their normal life. Father, as we go through this week, that we ask that you be with us and keep us safe. Help us do what is right in your sight. We pray these things to you, Jesus. Amen. Be reading for 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith and virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly, brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So listen to our heart, hear our spirit sing, a song of praise that flows from those who have redeemed. We will use the word you know to tell. Thank you. 
Good morning. It is great to spend this moment with you this morning, and welcome to all of you gathered with us. Welcome to those of you who are with us online. Uh, Very much looking forward to spending this time in God's Word with you today. You know, I was reading this week about some of the incredible things that actors will do to play their role more convincingly. Uh, You may have heard stories before about what's called method acting, uh, which is where an actor doesn't just play their role while the camera is rolling, but sometimes they will even go to these great lengths in preparation for their role, uh, and even sometimes live in character, like live as their role, Uh, for days and weeks and and even months while a a film is being filmed or a a production is being staged. Uh, I was reading about Dustin Hoffman, for example, uh, who once, uh, the story is, kept himself awake for 72 hours straight before filming a scene because he wanted to really feel and look like and be that overworked, stressed out character that he was portraying. And his co-star said to him, why don't you just try acting being tired? It's a whole lot easier. But some actors like to do it that way. Uh, You hear stories about people who uh, play maybe a dancer in a movie, and then they will spend like eight hours a day like practicing and rehearsing all of these intricate ballet steps and maneuvers so that they can really authentically play their part. Or or I read about an actress who played an Olympic ice skater. Boy, that would be my nightmare Uh, because you don't just have to get out there and ice skate because that's hard enough, but she had to learn how to like move and jump and do some of those things and, and, and many falls and a herniated disc and stitches and practice later. That's what it took to really become that person that she was portraying. Maybe the best example of all is the the very famous Meryl Streep, who's won a lot of awards for her acting, and I should really hope so, given the links that she goes to. Uh, One of the things I read about was that she uh, was playing this classical musician 
And she actually learned from scratch how to play the violin in the matter of like eight weeks' time, just like constant devoted attention. Once she was playing a a character in a World War II movie, and she didn't just learn her lines, like she learned German, and she learned Polish, both languages, so that she could really speak and sound like this character in the story that she was playing. And, And those things to you and me, they probably sound like way over the top. Like to me, that sounds like way overkill for a two hour movie. But to the actor that really wants to become that person that they're portraying, well, that's just part of it. It's just part of the commitment. It's just part of the diligence that it takes for that actor for a moment to be transformed into that role, into that person that they really are trying to be. And to me, that example of an actor, you know, your Dustin Hoffman, your, your Meryl Streep, it could be an interesting way of thinking about change today. You know, change is, of course, what our January sermon series has been all about. And, and every week we've been talking about seeking true and lasting change in our lives. And each week we talk about a new ingredient, an attitude, a, an action, a motivation that can help us toward that turning point, that, that point of change when we become more like our Savior and what he's called us to be. And, and we're going to be doing that again today. Actually, today is going to be our last lesson in this uh, first series of lessons to start off our year. And much like those really devoted actors, what our passage today reveals is the importance of commitment, like the importance of diligence if we're going to become the person that we're trying to be. Because even more than the actor who just pretends to be someone for a short while, you know, as Christians, we are actually called to so study and so imitate our role model that we become like him. And to do that, we must learn to make every effort to be like Jesus. That's what our passage for today teaches us. It's 2 Peter chapter 1. If you'd like to get out your Bible and be turning there, I'd welcome you to follow along. In this passage, we are introduced not just to the source of our change in God, the source of this transformation, but also to the commitment that it really requires of us if we really accept this role and embrace it. And to me, that makes it a good place to finish off our series. We'll begin in verse 3, 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. We read this. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him, who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make Every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, brotherly affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord, Jesus Christ. There's our passage for today. Okay, so what is this passage teaching us 
about true and lasting change, because I think it says a lot about it, then what is it teaching us about what it really takes to get there? Well, one thing you may have noticed first as we read this passage is that the source of our transformation, the source of our true change, is not in ourselves alone. Because from the beginning, this passage did not start with us. From the beginning, it starts with what? His divine power has given us Everything we need for that change in us, for a godly life. And given it by what? Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. He has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desire. So this passage, the first two verses in it that set and ground it all, it does not start with us. It's kind of like if we want to go back to our actor analogy, it's kind of like how an actor's work doesn't start with them either. Like an actor doesn't just decide like who they're going to be and what they're going to say and how they're going to play that role. It's not just like come up with on a whim. The actor is drawing from a source, right? And the first part of that source, an actor has a, a script. The actor has a script which gives them instructions and gives them notes about how they are to act and, and, and how they are to play their role. The actor has this script with, which guides them for how their part fits into this story that is taking place. And what they do and how they act and who they are, it has its source in this, in this script. And we, of course, as Christians, we have something like that too. Not something that spells out every word and every action and gesture that we make in our lives, but God has given us everything we need for this godly life that we're trying to live. And one of the big major reasons this verse can say that is because God has given us what? He's given us the scriptures. We have God's word which instructs us on how to live, on how to live in this story that we're living in, how we play our part. We have the scriptures which guide us toward this proper end to the story, how the story is meant to go. And just as it's so important that an actor like really knows that script, because how else are they going to know like who to be and what to do? It is so important that we know our scriptures, for it is through, verse 3, our knowledge of him that God's power is at work within us. So the scriptures there that this like primary source for how we know him, how we know our part. And so we draw from them. Because in them we learn about the person that our lives are meant to imitate. Think about that actor again. So the actor has a script, right? And what does it do for them? Well, it gives them instructions that they need to follow in order to play their role. But it's not just a set of instructions either. It also has a, a character, a person that the story is all about. The script tells the story of this person and the actor has got to strive to be like that person in every possible way that they can. 
And so the person revealed in that script is like another part of the source of where that action comes from. Because that person reveals the nature and the actions of what the actor's meant to be like. The whole goal of acting is to be like that person revealed in the script as much as can possibly be done. And again, as Christians, we have that too. Our scriptures reveal to us a person a role model that we are meant to be like in every way that we can. God's words, bound and written, reveal the word embodied and living, our role model, Jesus Christ. And it's our great task, our opportunity to be like him. To use the words of verse 4, our great task, our opportunity is to participate in the divine nature. That's his nature, not ours. Our entire goal is to become like him in every way, as much as can possibly be. And of course, the great news of the gospel is that that is not just up to us alone. If it were, it would be impossible because of our sin and failure. Uh, it would be impossible because it would be impossible for us to escape from the corruption in the world. That's what verse 4 says. But because our God is gracious and Christ's blood, when we're baptized in his name, is constantly cleansing and sanctifying us and transforming us, we may hope to be like him. When God's power has finished its work in us, we will be like him. God can make that possible. So the source of this great transformation in us is God's power, and he's given us everything we need through things like the scriptures, through things like the example and power of his own son the things that we need to become like him. But to do that, and this is, of course, a note, a note that we keep hitting in this series, to do that, we have a part to play in this too. We might not be able to become like him just by our power alone, but much like the actor who really wants to be like the person that they're trying to be, if we are going to be changed into that person that we're trying to be, then we're going to need commitment. We're going to need diligence. Second Peter 1 describes that need like this, starting in verse 5. For this reason, make every effort Make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control. These are qualities of Christ. And to self-control, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly affection. And to brotherly affection, love. For if you possess these qualities... In increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few verses later in verse 10, it says, Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, then you will never fall. So you hear you hear that call to commitment, right, in these verses. Like, if we're going to be changed to be more like this person we're trying to be like, what is necessary for that change? Make every effort, verse 5 says. Be all the more diligent, verse 10. For if you practice, verse 10, add to faith goodness, and to goodness add knowledge. Add these qualities in ever-increasing measure. Like the actor who first learns the script and gets to know the character and then like, 
puts in the work, works on that drawling southern accent, practices in the mirror those characteristic gestures and the way their character walks and even learns a language or learns the violin. Like that's where the, the person really starts to come to life, right? And it wouldn't be possible to do any of that if you didn't first know the script and know the character, but to stop there would be to stop short of acting. That's reading. But for the actor, it's, you must act, take action. And the more committed they are, the more diligent they are in the careful imitation of their role model, the more they begin to look like them, the more they bring out the best in that person, the truth in that person, and bring it to life. The actor transforms into the role through commitment and diligence. And we as Christians are called to something similar really even something greater. Because we're not just pretending. But if we're going to be changed and become like our Savior, of course, we can't just stop at learning the script. Our charge today is make every effort. Start with those qualities that most define Christ faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, godliness, love, perseverance, and we diligently practice them, practice it every day with commitment, making every effort. Because when we do those things, we become more like the one that we hope to be like. I want to share one last thought with you this morning as we close. And I don't know if I've overdone the acting analogy yet. I overdo it with sports analogies all the time, so I'm going to milk this one for all it's worth. Uh, I don't know a lot about acting. Many people will know more about theater or movies, how they are made especially. But I don't think that most movies are made in a single day. Actually, I don't think most scenes in a movie are made in a single day or certainly not shot in a single take. And like even the best actors, even the most committed ones, forget a line or an instruction in the script. Maybe sometimes they fall out of character and revert back to their old way, like the, their own self. Maybe they lose sight of where the story is going and they do something that doesn't fit with where this story's meant to go. And then they have to stop. Somebody shouts, cut. And they reset and regroup and give it another take. And another take. And another take. And in the doing of another take, and another take, and another take, I don't think that is the mark of a bad actor. Even if that's, even if an actor's mistake is the reason they have to do another take, I would think that the bad actor would be the one who just gets discouraged and gives up, storms off set. Or maybe the one who says, well, that was good enough after one sloppy take. But no, in the doing of another take, another take, another take, it's not a bad actor, that's a committed one, a devoted one. And undoubtedly, that commitment makes an actor learn a little more with each and every take a little more about how to more perfectly play their part. Maybe as Christians, we need to keep that in mind as well. Let us not be overly discouraged when we 
forget the script and stray from it. But also, let's not be so quick to just say, well, that was good enough. Fold it and set it aside not to be seen again. And if we should fall out of character, revert back to our old way, let's be like the committed actor who regroups, resets, and gives it another take, knowing that every time that we make every effort, we become a little more like our role model, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thankfully, we have a God who is with us and is a giver of many second chances to reset and start again. And maybe this is a time in your life when you need to do that. Our challenge and theme today was about commitment and diligence. And maybe those are things that in your life right now you might need more of. Maybe they're lacking. Maybe you're one who falls more to that side of you get discouraged. You want to stop. But maybe you're one that falls more to that side of, well, that was probably good enough. So I'll just not worry about it. But if God is going to continually make us more like him, let's bring that commitment and do our part to make every effort that we can be. Because God can do great things with that. And he certainly gives us many chances to work on being like him. Maybe today, uh, for others, your response is to respond to the gospel. When we repent of our sins and we're baptized in his name, in the name of Jesus, that's like this great reset on our lives. We're setting aside that old way, committing ourselves to the role of a lifetime, becoming like Christ through a lot of diligent days trying to be as much like him as we can be. By God's power, we can one day be partakers in the divine nature. And that's a hope we're striving for. So however you may be called or challenged today, let's think about that commitment that we can bring to our lives of faith as we respond in our hearts or in the presence of the church while we stand, while we sing.
be seated. <clears throat> In preparation for the Lord's Supper, uh, we'll be singing Faithful Love. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the privilege of us being able to call you Father. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for your son. Thank you for his broken body on the cross and that ultimate sacrifice. Father, we ask you to be with us now and as we take of this bread, may we do so in a manner that is worthy and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Right now for the cup. Father, thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross, for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, be with us as we take of this cup. May we do so in a manner that's worthy and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This prayer will serve for our closing prayer and also our prayer for our giving. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for blessing us so richly. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to set aside and purpose and return to you what we've been privileged to be able to do. May we do so with a cheerful heart, with gladness and thanksgiving. Father, also be with us as we depart this place. Help us to be alert and careful as we move about in this community. With the pandemic, help us to be safe and guard against those things that could compromise our health. Father, we're mindful of those that we know that are suffering from this virus. And we pray that healing will take place and recovery. We pray for the correct treatments and the appropriate treatments for them to help them in this battle with this virus. And Father, ultimately, may your hand of healing be there to restore their health. Father, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for the opportunity for us to call you Father and that we are your children. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen.